Latifa Safir. I'm a quilter primarily, but I'm also a pattern designer and a fabric designer, and I love to create tools as well. Today we're gonna talk about bias tape applique. Um, a very good example of, of bias tape applique is the quilt that we see here. And um, it's one of the, my favorite techniques. It's one of, the favorite thing, one of my favorite things to do and to play with. And I have a lot of different quilts and patterns that I do with the bias tape applique. To show you a little bit about bias tape applique, you have to understand a little bit about how fabric works. Um, we have here a, just a, a fat quarter of fabric. Then I'm gonna take that raw edge and fold it in a 45 degree angle. If you're really, you, you're pretty much just matching one side to the opposite side. Most mats, like this wonderful mat we have here, have a 45 degree angle as well. So you can line that up along with your mat to make sure and to confirm it. I always tell, um, when I'm teaching someone this technique, I tell them to turn that 45 degree angle towards them. It just makes it a lot easier for you to see what you're doing. If that piece of fabric is too large for you to cut on your mat itself, you can actually fold it over to make it a little bit more compact. In this situation, um, we don't necessarily need to do that, but you can fold it over as well. The nice thing about this, if you have a much larger piece of fabric, you can continue to fold so that you're actually creating a square based upon that initial 45 degree angle. And the beauty of bias is that all four edges now are on the bias and we can cut along any of those edges. So I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and my ruler here. The first thing I'm gonna do is just to trim off the fold along that edge. Then I'm gonna line that up with the mat. And in this particular case, with the quilt that I just showed you, we're making um, half inch bias strips. And we'll talk a little bit about um, the width of the bias strips in a moment. But just to cut the strips, we're just gonna cut out one inch strips all the way along the width of fa the fabric. This is gonna allow us to have, in the end, a nice pile of bias tape strips that we can use. Depending upon the project and the quilt, we can actually um, uh, piece and sew those bias strips together. But today, because of the project that we're working on, well, since the loops are relatively small, um, we can actually take these individual bias strips and, and use them without piecing them together. So that's what we're gonna do today. So a little bit about the bias strips themselves. There's a series of really wonderful tools called bias tape makers. They're relatively inexpensive. They come in a, a series of sizes. Um, there's a couple of different brands that make them, but the style that I like is the one that has a sort of a flat opening on the end. And there's a couple of brands. So when you look up for your bias tape maker, look for that sort of flat style at the end of your bias tape maker. Today, we're gonna uh, use a 12 millimeter or half inch size. So those bias strips that we just cut, I have some cut in the color that we're gonna use today, and um, which is the navy. And it's very simple. This is something that I do recommend that you use steam with. Steam really allows you to set the crease on that bias tape. So these are the strips that we're making right here. And pretty much all it's doing is this bias tape maker, as you feed it through, it's gonna fold those sides in and we're gonna press that into place. So you feed the end in like that. And there's a little slot through the middle that allows you to pull that bias tape through. You get it started. And the very simple way to do this um, is one of the methods that I learned from doing this a lot is to actually hold that bias tape maker sort of at a 90 degree angle to your ironing surface. And this allows you to kind of keep the proper amount of pressure on that bias tape as it's feeding through so that the sides fold down really nicely. So, and you continue to do that until your bias tape strip is fed all the way through and this is the result. So today the quilt, 
Today, the quilt that we're working on um, includes, it's called Air Show, and it includes templates. The way that I transfer my template design onto my background is actually to draw it directly on the background fabric. Um, if the fabric is light enough, then you can see the template through the fabric. And if it's not, a lot of times you can cut the shape of that template out and lay the individual pieces on top and actually trace it on. It's important oftentimes to use a pen that won't iron away. Um, I use a Sharpie, I wouldn't necessarily always recommend that, but a nice acid-free marker like a Pigma marker works well. Air erasable is fine as long as iron it, it doesn't press away. So once my design is transferred on, um, I can also, if I want to, put inserts behind that bias tape applique as well. So here, the shape, uh, the loop shape in the center is cut out in fabric, and I'm gonna um, stitch that down. So we're gonna actually play with this one first. We're gonna stitch this one down first. My recommendation is to use a thread color that matches with the color of your bias tape. But just so that you can see it easier today, we're gonna to use a lighter thread and we're gonna really test out my sewing skills here. So now that I'm at my machine, I'm going to uh, take my bias tape and place it right at the edge of my fabric and on top of that line that we drew on our fabric earlier. The zipper foot I choose because it's perfect because just about every machine has a zipper foot and it works great for this application. You can align it with the edge of that bias tape and sew really close to the edge of that. We're just gonna start sewing. It's nice to have your needle stop in the down position. And once again, that thread that we're using is gray so that you can see it. But there's a lot of reasons why you wanna use a thread that sort of matches with your fabric. So you're gonna go all the way around the whole perimeter of your shape now I have one that I've already sewn together here. It has that long tail on it, we can cut that off. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you one of the most important steps here. And this step is actually to press that. You see how the bias tape is actually standing up on end? We're gonna use steam and heat to relax that outside edge of the bias tape. So don't be afraid to stretch it a little bit. Use steam in your iron and we're gonna press all the way around that edge. It's still gonna stand up just a little bit and you see why we use a darker thread as well because you can definitely see those stitches. And um, at home, you're gonna really take your time with that and stitch along. It's still gonna stand up some, but we relax it enough so where we can stitch it down. I'm gonna go back to my machine. And this out, this, the last step is very simple we're actually gonna just stitch that outside edge down. Once again, resting the edge of that uh, zipper foot right along the edge of the bias tape, and we're just gonna sew all the way around it starting at the edge of our fabric. So and you're just gonna continue to sew. You take your time as you're coming in around those sharper curves, and a nice dark bias tape that, refl that reflects the color of your bias um, tape will, will uh, look very nice against that. So those are the basics of bias tape applique. Um, and those, with this particular technique, you can make the beautiful quilt that we have here on the wall with the orange bias tape. This is the block base version. We also have over here um, a gray version with the continuous loops as well. So the most important things are to take your time with it, stitch very close to the edge, use a thread color very close, close to the color of your bias tape, and that's bias tape applique.